بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فائیو زیرو نائن زیرو او لیول بایولوجی چیپٹر فورٹین دس از دا تھرڈ ویڈیو اینڈ وی گونٹ ٹو بی ڈسکسنگ فورٹین پوائنٹ تھری اینڈ فورٹین پوائنٹ فور دس از فار دا نیو سلیبس ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی تھری فورٹین پوائنٹ تھری از اباؤٹ میمیلین ہارمونس ڈسکرائب ہارمون ایز اے کیمیکل سبسٹینس پروڈیوس بائی گلینڈ اینڈ کیریڈ بائی دا بلڈ وچ آلٹرز دا ایکٹیویٹی آف ون اور مور اسپیسیفک ٹارگیٹ آرگنس دین آئیڈینٹیفائی اینڈ ڈائیگرام اینڈوکرائن گلینڈ گلینڈ دیٹ پروڈیوس ہارمونس سو ایڈرینل ایڈرینلین پینکریاز انسولین اینڈ گلوکوگان پیچوٹری فالیکل اسٹیمولیٹنگ اینڈ لوٹنائزنگ ہارمون ٹیسٹیز ٹیسٹوسٹیرون اوریز ایسٹروجن اینڈ پروجیسٹرون انڈرسٹینڈ دا رول آف دا ہارمون ایڈرینلین اینڈ کمپیئر نروس اینڈ ہارمونل کنٹرول ان ہومیو اسٹیسز وی ہیو ٹو ڈسکرائب ہومیو اسٹیسز ایز اے مینٹیننس آف اے کانسٹنٹ انٹرنل انوائرمنٹ اینڈ ایکسپلین دا کانسیپٹ آف نیگیٹو فیڈ بیک Define hormone as a chemical substance produced by a gland carried by the blood alters the activity of one or more target organs. Now there's something I want to explain to you all that some of you think all hormones are proteins. Well, some hormones are proteins like insulin is a hormone which is a protein. But testosterone, estrogen, progesterone these are not protein hormones these are steroidal hormones testosterone steroidal fat cholesterol so all hormones are not proteins yes some hormones are proteins like insulin is a protein but testosterone is not a protein so we say a chemical substance produced by gland and these glands are called endocrine glands endocrine glands why because these are called ductless glands they don't have a duct like salivary glands have a duct pancreatics has a duct sweat gland has a duct but these ones don't have a duct why because they throw their secretions whatever they produce the chemical substance they throw that into the blood stream and it is carried by the blood to another distant organ where it alters the activity of one or more target organs so it can be one organ it can be many organs like the growth hormone affects the person as a whole and the person grows taller his bones grow his muscles grow his nerves grow his blood vessels grow his skin grows so the growth hormone affects the entire body so it's got many target organs but like insulin produced in the pancreas only works on the liver cells and the muscle cells so what we have to understand is it can affect one or more target organs now we have to know which hormones are produced where and which target target organs do they affect in some cases we have to know this detail in some cases we don't have to know this detail now as you can see every organ has an artery and a vein so this is the pancreas now the pancreas produces insulin and glucagon so the insulin and glucagon is produced by the islets of langerhans these are specialized cells in the pancreas which produce normally the pancreas only produces uh, these hormones but it also produces enzymes which is the rest of the body which produces the rest of the pancreas and produces these enzymes which enter the duodenum and then digest the food that you eat it digest uh, digest the proteins and the carbohydrates and the fats so there's a pancreatic trypsin there's a pancreatic lipase and there is a pancreatic protease which is called trypsin and lipase and um proteas lipase and the carbohydrate pancreatic amylase so all that is the enzymes but those are not called the endocrine the endocrine portion is the islets of langerhans which produce the two hormones insulin and glucagon so the pancreas produces insulin and glucagon now the insulin is this molecule which i have shown you in green and the insulin is going to be carried in the blood so it's going to be carried in the pancreatic vein and reaches the liver and you can understand from the vein go to the inferior vena cava and then ultimately to the left side of the heart and then enters the aorta and from the aorta arises the pancreatic artery now this pancreatic artery which arises from the aorta is going to bring these hormones the insulin now how does insulin then know that it has to work in the liver the reason is because the receptors for it there are receptors on the liver cells this is a liver cell so there are receptors on the liver cell where the insulin is going to get attached to on the liver cell and the liver cell will have these receptors for these hormones and then of course the glucose is converted into glycogen and the glycogen is stored in the liver 
so basically you've got to understand the hormone being produced by gland so pancreas is a gland because it's producing insulin and glucagon glucagon of course is produced when your blood glucose levels fall and insulin is produced when your blood glucose level rises like you've had some bread or rice or you've had something sweet you've had a piece of chocolate cake and that results in a time that a digestion takes place and then the absorption takes place and then of course the blood glucose rises it is detected in the pancreas and the pancreas releases insulin now your syllabus says that identify a diagram where the glands are are there now so first of all the gland which i'm going to talk about is the pituitary gland now the pituitary gland is at the base of the brain you can see here where the line is going and that produces fsh and lh which we are going to study in a later chapter so pituitary gland fsh and lh then we have the adrenal gland now on top of the kidneys the adrenal gland produces a hormone called adrenaline and this is the fight and flight hormone and which is produced in a state of anxiety right then we have the pancreas now you must be able to identify the pancreas and pancreas produces two hormones insulin and glucagon insulin and glucagon then we have uh, the male hormones testes produce the hormone testosterone and then in if it's a woman then in the woman the female hormone that is produced by the ovaries is estrogen and progesterone so in the male it would be testosterone in the female it will be estrogen and progesterone now you must know the positions where these are pituitary gland adrenal gland the pancreas the ovaries in the female and the testes in the male Adrenaline is a hormone uh, and is produced in situations of severe anxiety, fright, fight and flight situations. And this results in an increase in the heartbeat just like when you see something very scary or you're scared of uh, like I'm very scared of lizards and if I see a lizard you know I know my heartbeat goes up and I'm I, I sort of I'm scared that it's going to fall on me. so increases my heartbeat and also adrenaline hormone works on the liver cells so they must have receptors on the liver cells where the hormone adrenaline travels in the blood and reaches the liver cells and here it converts the glycogen to glucose so there is going to be increased blood glucose levels now you can understand in a situation of severe fear and anxiety where you need to run away like there's a lion or there's something scary and you want to just run away from that situation you need more glucose because you need more aerobic respiration more muscle power so if you have more glucose in your blood more aerobic respiration is going to take place more energy is going to be released muscles contract and relax maybe you can run away from that situation or you can put up a fight and punch somebody something like that and uh, so these are the factors which are called that's why the adrenaline is called a uh, fight hormone or flight hormone in which you sort of produced in situations of anxiety like you're bunking the biology class and somehow uh, i'm in the school and i see you there and i see you're not in the class so that's going to result in a lot of uh, anxiety situation for you because i do not take it very easy if you are in class uh, if you are in school and you have bunked my class so adrenaline it's a fight flight and flight hormone increases heartbeat increases your blood glucose uh works on the liver cells so converts the glycogen to glucose and your blood glucose level rises how does the endocrine system help maintain a homeostasis homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment and that is maintaining the temperature maintaining uh, your blood glucose level and maintaining your water content of blood so controls and coordinates the body response to changes in the environment using hormones then is this the same function as the nervous system explained yes both perform regulation so are the nervous and endocrine system the same thing no they are not nervous system uses nerves and neurotransmitters endocrine system uses glands and hormones so we're going to do a comparison between the endocrine system and the nervous system now one very good comparison of course i'm going to do a few comparison for you to really understand the whole complexity of this uh, topic 
In the nervous system, it's a very fast response. In it's a slower as compared to the nervous. It's not very slow, but it's slower as compared to the nervous system. Now, these factors, which are common to both, that's a Venn diagram. Both react to stimuli. Both help maintain homeostasis. Both are systems of the body that send messages. Hypothalamus is a link between the two systems. Now the endocrine system is slower, uses hormones to send messages, organs are called glands, travel through the bloodstream, hormones, example, adrenaline, thyroxine, insulin, testosterone. A nervous system, very fast response, uses impulses, electrical impulses to send messages. Organs are brain, spinal cord and nerves, uses neurons and there's a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system, which we studied in a previous chapter. Another very good uh, comparison, nervous system neurons release neurotransmitters at synapse, neuromuscular, neuroglandular junctions. Affected include other neurons, muscles, and glands. Rapid responses, more effectors. Endocrine system releases hormones into the interstitial fluid, then the blood and the general circulation. Affectors virtually any type of body cell, so can have widespread effects or diverse effects of metabolism. Slower, long-lasting responses as hormones linger in the blood. Now, if you look at the comparison, endocrine system refers to the collection of glands that produce hormones to control the function of the body. Nervous system refers to the network of nerve cells that coordinate the function of the body by transmitting nerve impulses. These are composed of glands, composed of nerve cells that are in the brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves. Use hormones to transmit the signal to the affected organ. Use neurotransmitters to transmit the signal. Signals are transmitted through blood. Signals are transmitted through nerve cells. And then, of course, we come to the whole system is not physically connected. The whole system is not physically connected, right? The whole system is physically connected. Signals take more time to reach the affected organ. Signals are transmitted within a short period of time. Effect is widespread. Like the growth hormone affects the whole body. Effect is localized, like you want to withdraw your hand. You touch something hot and you withdraw your hand. It controls the growth, hydration level, glucose level, heat, productivity, sexual maturity, and the production of gametes. Controls the muscle movement, heartbeat, digestion, breathing, senses, speech, and memory. So they're very different. We have a very good comparison in this that we can understand this. Then we have function depends on age stress, environmental factors, genetics, and disease conditions. Functions can be affected by multiple sclerosis, meningitis, and cancers. Now, this is a summary concept map. What is homeostasis? It's brought about by two systems, nervous and the endocrine system. And how is it brought back is by a negative feedback mechanism. Now, here's another very good diagram. What you see is that there is an imbalance. So there is variables in homeostasis. Number one, stimulus produces change in that variable. Change is detected by a receptor. The receptor is like a sensor. The input of information sent along afferent pathways to the control center. Then the output information sent along efferent pathways to the effector. And response to the effector feeds back to influence magnitude of the stimulus and returns variable to homeostasis. So basically homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. Control center maintains a set point. This is the important thing. The word is set point. Compare current value to set point value. Normal body temperature 37 or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Send message to the correct. So you have to see there's a control center. And then from the control center that number one stimulus produces a change, change detected, input information sent along this thing to the control, the control output information effector and results in a change and then of course this is the imbalance is again corrected another different way of explaining this is stimulus change in, in conditions receptor detects the change modulator decides what to do about the change effector part of the body that carries out the response response uh, change in activity negative feedback response alters the stimulus in the opposite direction Another way to express it is a neg feedback is in which the system responds in an opposite direction to the disturbance. Your body responds in such a way to reverse the changes that is happening. If you enter this room, this room is very hot. What is going to happen? Vasodilation, sweating, and that is going to reverse this, and your body is not going to get heated up. It will remain at 37 degrees Celsius. 
This way, small changes don't become too large. Negative feedback is the primary homeostatic mechanism that our bodies use. Definition is homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment within a living organism. Homeo means same and stasis means a state. So maintain the same state, like maintain your blood pH, maintain your water content of blood, maintain your blood glucose level, maintain your body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius. Now when we look at a little more detail on homeostasis, it involves the maintenance of the internal environment in a constant state despite external changes. You enter this room, this room is very hot. You enter this room, this room is very cold. Your blood glucose level rises. Your blood pH. Examples include blood pH, blood carbon dioxide levels, blood glucose concentration, body temperature, blood pressure, water balance. Basically the water content of blood. Now what is negative feedback? Your body temperature decreases. Heating process activated. Shivering. Body temperature increases. Your body temperature increases. Cooling process activated. Sweating. Body temperature decreases. So this is a negative feedback loop. This is a very good example. It's a little difficult example, but still I want you to know about it. Like a person rises from the bed. Blood drains from the upper body, creating an homeostatic imbalance. Receptor. Barrow receptors, which are detect the pressure above the heart respond to drop in blood pressure. And then we have the brain. Barrow receptors send signals to the cardiac center of the brain stem, integrating center. And heartbeat accelerates in response to the cardiac center. Now the blood pressure rises to normal. Homeostasis is restored. A very good example of homeostatic compensation for a postural change in blood pressure. When you're lying down, there's no effect of gravity. But when you get up, gravity pulls the blood down into the legs. And this is how the body responds to this. We call this postural. Postural means that from a lying state, you get up into a stranding state and it results a change in blood pressure. So this is a very simple graphical depiction of a negative feedback system. This comes in your MCQs a lot. There is a level of something and we call this the set point. Like there is a blood glucose level, which is between 80 and 120. So say that level is 100 here and we have blood sugar here. Now, above normal, we eat something, uh, carbohydrates, the level increases. The response trigger to reduce level. And then, of course, it results in a response and then again back to normal. So, above normal level detected, response trigger to reduce the level to normal. Achha. Then, of course, it goes below normal level detected, the response trigger to increase the level to normal. And then this normal level is maintained. This is the normal level which is maintained at all times. So there is a change in the normal, there's a set point, there's a change in the set point, and it results in a response and return to set point. Now that change could be an increase or a decrease. It could be an increase or decrease of temperature, it could be an increase or decrease of blood glucose level. Another very good uh, diagram, blood temperature falls, blood vessels constrict so that the heat is conserved, sweat glands do not secrete fluid, shivering generates heat which warms the body, heat is retained. Now, in this situation, body temperature rises, blood vessels dilate, resulting in heat loss to the environment, sweat glands secrete fluid, sweat, sweat is produced as the fluid evaporates, heat is lost from the body, and heat is lost to the environment, and there is a normal body temperature. So there is a change, and then it's back to normal. The change could be more or less. You enter this room, this room is very hot, your, blood temp your body temperature increases, your blood temperature increases, detected in the brain. Brain sends impulses to the sweat glands, produce sweat. Sweat evaporates, cools the body down. Okay, another situation. You enter this room, this room is very cold. Your blood, your body is going to get cold. Your blood is going to get cold, detected in the brain. Brain vasoconstriction of the skin arterioles. So less blood flowing in the skin. Less in the arteries, less in the capillaries. So less in the capillaries, more uh, more blood circulating inside. Your core body is maintained so that your temperature can be maintained. But temporarily, your extremities will be cold. So blood temperature falls or the body temperature rises. In both situations, the response actually corrects this so that the body's temperature is maintained at 37 at all times. Uh, this completes our chapter uh, 14. Point three and 14.4. So 14.3 and 14.4 have been completed. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for watching and thank you for the comments.